Hey guys, Tommy Bryson here, and welcome to the Tommy Bryson Show. And I caught myself watching this video about an average millionaire that has around $1.4 million. And I was like, I have so much to say here, so why not just go ahead and make a video on the Reaction Channel reacting to this video about this couple that is worth around $1.4 million, meaning their assets minus liabilities equal, meaning they have a net worth of $1.4 million, okay? So let's go ahead, watch this video together, and see exactly what I think fully, and also comment down below, let me know exactly what you think. If you guys are new here, well, like, subscribe, hit the bell to get notified, and do all the fancy stuff for the YouTube algorithm. Now let's get right into this video. Chris Hogan here. I've spent and by the way, this used to be a show done by I think by by um Chris Hogan, but like obviously for Dave Ramsey. And by the way, I think Chris Hogan is no longer working with Dave Ramsey. I I heard about the entire issue honestly, and it sounds like he had like, you know, personal issues going on, but then working for Dave Ramsey, you have to sign contracts meaning for example, hey, what might happen in your personal life, you might be held accountable for in your work life also. So, uh, you know, you might say, Tommy, do you think if I have a job, for example, and I get fired for something I did in my personal like life, is that supposed to happen? The answer is, well, it depends on the job, the business, and what they told you in the beginning. Because basically, if you agree to it, and it is, for example, a private business, private company, then yeah, you're kind of like liable for it. And by the way, I feel extremely bad for um for Chris Hogan. The guy had not a lot of knowledge to give out there, but people make mistakes, you know. So I'm hoping that he bounces back from this and also his family recovers from everything that's going on, you know. But yeah, Chris Hogan is officially no longer a part of the Dave Ramsey Solution Squad. So sad to see it happen, but it's it's not it's not it's not good at all. You know, I don't feel good about this at all. It's, um I hope they figure this out with his family. A guy had a lot of a lot of good um. A lot of good work. I hope they don't delete his work or like his Instagram or like his YouTube channel. Just keep everything up because there's still good content there. People make mistakes. So I, I but I get it. I get it though. I get it. Spent so much time on the road and talked with a lot of people. And the millionaire success stories that I run into might surprise you. By the way, this whole show is basically about how Chris Hogan goes on the road, all this stuff, and then he basically finds like average millionaires and then hears the stories and he's like, oh. So this is exactly what an average millionaire actually looks like. I would actually want to see a lot more of these videos. And by the way, if you're a millionaire and you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, well, go to my Axe Tommy Bryson channel and schedule a call for free. That way we can talk one-on-one -on, -one on that channel. That'll be fun. Whether I'm at an event or talking on my podcast, one thing has become clear. Most people have no idea what a self-made millionaire really looks like. You're gonna that is so true. That is so true. Even for me, when I was first like getting started with money, I thought a millionaire was, hey, you gotta have gold chain, nice everything, like nice clothes, nice sneakers, nice car, crazy mansion, crazy house, you know, and like all the ladies, of course, that comes along with it. But you come to find out that basically the average millionaire doesn't really look like that. They're just like an average person with a large bank account and investments and like basically no debt and so on. And they're basically just like normal regular persons, but they are taken care of. Well, normal regular people, not normal regular persons. For all of my people, they're gonna kill my grammar in the comments down below. I'm gonna get a glimpse into the life of a self-made millionaire. These folks are hard at work. You don't wanna miss it, people. This is Millionaire. Ooh, this is Millionaire. By the way, Chris Hogan, man, that voice, that voice, you don't want to miss that. Oh, that's, that's a nice voice, man. It's a great radio, radio show voice. Your fan is next, and he is in Houston, Texas. Hey, your fan, how are you? Pretty good. How are you? Good. What is your net worth, sir? Uh, 1.34 million. 1.24 or 1.4 million? from Irvin, Texas. That's a lot of money, no matter where you are. New York, Texas, Florida, anywhere. $1.4 million is a lot of money to build up, man. Uh, shout out to, shout out to this couple, man. I'm Mina, this is my husband, Irfan, and we're Dave Ramsey Millionaires. We live in Houston, Texas. We're a family of five. I'm a life coach and YouTuber. Oh, yo, there are so many people out there that are YouTubers now. By the way, guys, YouTube is like large. It doesn't matter your age, where you're from, what you look like. No, no, no. Although, yes, I am beautiful. I've been told so. Okay, just don't comment about it. But yeah, it doesn't matter what you look like 
or what you want to talk about, usually like just like just expressing yourself on YouTube can become a career. And that's awesome, okay? That that's so awesome. And by the way, I actually had thoughts of moving to Texas for tax purposes, but I found a better place to move for tax purposes. More on that later on. I got my Chris Hogan voice, guys, if you guys didn't notice. And I'm a process improvement expert working in the oil and gas. So I was a Wow, look at that house, guys. Look at that house. That is a nice house. Two garages. By the way, a house like this in New York, easily 1.5, 1.7, 1. maybe like $1.1 million. A lot of money in Texas, maybe 200 and, you know, maybe like 300 to four to 500 K. No more than that. But Texas houses are so much more different than New York, okay? I, I, I cannot be here for another second. I was originally born in Pakistan and um, grew up there, did my bachelor's in mechanical engineering there. Uh, then at about 93, moved to the US to do my master's and then... Wow, so yes, he, he got a bachelor's in mechanical engineering and then came to the US to do the entire, for example, master's. You know, a lot of people say, hey, you know what, I'm not gonna go to college, you know, I'm an immigrant, whatever. Like, go to college where you are and then move over those skills to the US because basically, if you are in a good field wherever you are in life, wherever country, and you come to the US and it's actually like in demand, you're also gonna be very, very high, high chance of actually going out there and finding a job. So shout out to Irvin here, man. I went on to work for a company here. Oh, you guys notice the sticker? The sticker for YouTube? Yeah, nice. And I was born and raised in Chicago, went to Northwestern University where I received no financial education whatsoever, which I think is a major issue with. Oh, she says she went to college, but received no financial education. You know, I went to college and I graduated as an accountant and I still didn't get any financial advice. <laughs> And I'm not lying, you know, I went to college or like for accounting and all that taught me, hey, Tommy, here's a balance sheet. OK, here's how you track this stuff for this company, and that company. But there is no form of financial education whatsoever. Financial education and to learn about accounting is completely different. The education in the U.S. And I found myself in my very early 20s, a single mom making over $100,000 and spending over $100,000. Wow. Early 20s single mom making over a hundred thousand dollars and spending over 100k you know the thing is you know people think that money is going to solve their problems but it doesn't it doesn't at all if you go from making for example ten dollars an hour to like four dollars an hour but you still have the same habits what you're going to do is basically increase your spendings right up there or a little bit more and before you know it you're right back in the same ditch you dig yourself in over and over and over again happened to me if you can't work with a small amount of money you can't work with a large amount of money and then a few years back, I discovered this guy named Dave Ramsey. And as I started- That's, that's what I, I love, you know? When people say, Tommy, I found your video, it helped me out. That, I like that so much, you know? I, that's why I wanna make more videos, more content, just to help people a lot more and get that same reaction. Like, oh my gosh, I found out about this guy. For me, that guy was Edgar T. Harv. And then it was the richest man in Babylon. Then it was Warren Buffett. You know, it was like this whole little like trail of people, but it's all about that one spark. That's all you need. That's all you need. I started listening to him and reading his books. It occurred to me that a lot of his principles were very similar to my husband's principles. Ooh. By, by the way, guys, if you guys have like a husband and a wife and you guys are not like on the same page financially, you're going to have a lot of dysfunction because if one person's a spender, one's a saver, it's like basically you paddle forward, I paddle backwards. The boat is not going to be moving anywhere. So you got to be on the same, same page, usually before you get married, before you get married, before you get married. Just saying that over and over again, because it's important you understand this. Before you get married, have all these things in place. And the more I listened to him and watched him, it started sinking in. I was the problem. The min You know something I learned, guys? You can't change people. And I remember my, my girlfriend and I had the same problem. And you can't change people. People need to wait until like it clicks for them and then that's when they like, make a change. But it's very hard to change someone's spending habits, especially when they think that they're not doing anything wrong. So for her to click like this is awesome. It's awesome, awesome, awesome. In it that we became in sync, our wealth grew. And from that point on is where we actually became millionaires. Then according to Dave Ramsey, the definition of a millionaire is you take all your assets, subtract all your liabilities, and that is equal to a million dollars. Not somebody... Yeah, yeah. You know... <sighs> Oh my gosh, like there's so many millionaires like, you know, like on YouTube and like Instagram, but like what they have is basically, hey, I own a million dollars worth of properties, but I only have, for example, a hundred K in equity. Are you a millionaire? No, because you have 900 K in debt. You see what I'm saying here? That That's like the big problem here. So yeah, I do agree with like, hey, 
assets minus liabilities give you net worth. It should always be like that. If you have a million dollars then you're good to go. And usually you don't want to have a lot of debt, obviously. Like that, not that cool at all. Who owns a million dollars worth of stuff because they may be in debt. The number one factor is actually the savings rate, right? So, so to be a millionaire, you don't have to earn a lot. Uh By the way, savings rate, more like investing rate, right? You got to be investing. Investing and compound interest are going to be like your best friends when it comes to like um, becoming a millionaire. There are people who earn very little. Uh, uh, you know, the average I think is around uh, 50,000 50, or less. And, and with that, if you have a decent savings rate, you can retire in less than a decade. Oh, wow. Less than a decade and you retire. People don't understand that basically you don't need to earn 100K or 200K or 300K. No. Like the average millionaire, like one in five, one in seven, one in five, they have a nine to five job and they don't earn that, and they don't own that, and they don't earn that much money. But what they do do is basically invest a ton of their money and keep their expenses very, very low. That's the whole, like, that's the secret right there. It's not about how much you make, it's about how much you invest and how much you keep. That, that's a general rule there. Uh, but beyond that, a lot of the textbooks say, you know, you got to save 10%, and that's fine, but that's will get you to financial independence in the lifetime that is expected, right? So it's at 65. Uh yeah, 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 yeah. There's so many like rule of thumbs like, hey, do it this way, do it that way. But if you want to be average, you do things that way. But if you want to get to where you want to go like very fast, then you got to do a lot more than the average person is willing to do. For example, what does what Muhammad Ali said? Don't quit, suffer now, and be a champion for the rest of your life, right? That's the whole idea. So that's why I invest around 95% of all my money. Literally, 95% of all my money just goes into investments. That's it. Uh, as a retirement age, uh, if you want to be financially independent a little bit sooner than that, you got to get up to the numbers like 30, 40, 50, 60 kind of percent. By the way, remember, okay, she's, she's talking about 30, 40, 50, 60%, like investing all that money, right? But remember, okay, this guy makes a lot of money. His wife makes a lot of money, right? So in reality, both of them together, it's, it's a large income. So living, for example, on 50K or, or 70K is not that hard at all. You get what I'm saying? So if you do make, for example, 50K, you can live, for example, on 25K and invest 25K, well, you're going to get there a lot faster. And if you make more money, even better. And so that is what impacts it, not the income. So, so uh, for us, uh, where are we coming from? Uh, our mindset is a little bit more minimalistic. A uh, lot of time people think that we are depriving ourselves because we are you know, saving 80%, that means... 80% he's saving, that is amazing. That is amazing, you know, that's that's awesome. And by the way, there is no depriving. I think, <laughs> I think I remember like, for example, it was like, no, but I wanna buy what I wanna buy, you know? And it was kind of like, where did I get this mentality from? Like, hey, no, I wanna buy this, no. I just want to make other companies rich, right? Oh, I'm going to buy this Gucci shirt or this whatever shirt, like cost $500. Oh, I, I want to buy that. No, you're just making another company rich, okay? So if I can have good food, I can go out maybe on a date every single week and I can pay all my bills, I'm happy. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. Once I'm financially free, I can have a lot more options to what to do with my money. Until then, you got to make sacrifices. That we are not, you know, enjoying life at all. The amount of money that we spend still, uh, it's just focused. So um... that's awesome. That's awesome. By the way, that house, man, I cannot get over the house. It is beautiful. One of the questions we get is what car we have. So we drive two cars and both of them we bought on cash. That's a Toyota Corolla, I think, right? I know nothing about cars, guys. Or Honda's. Uh, <laughs> Yo, I just told you I know nothing about cars, right? So don't judge me. Toyota Corolla, I think this is. So that was important to me because, in my opinion, if you have to finance a car, then you can't afford it. So both yeah, usually that that is true. If you can't, if well, it's so tricky, you know. It's not. There's people that can afford to like basically buy a car for cash, but don't because they say, hey, I can use this money to go out and invest. But then it's such a tricky thing to do. In my case, usually you buy those things for cash and just call it a day. Stop trying to play the game where oh, I have this car. It's like a hundred k. Crazy insurance, crazy payments, but I can deduct from my business or from this or from that. I can invest this money. Usually, it's just gonna cancel out. Usually, just buy a decent car for cash. Call it a day. You're good to go. My first car is gonna be probably a 2014, 2017 Corolla. Both were bought in cash, and the uh, idea is that uh, we're gonna drive it till the wheels come off, as Dave says. Well, I don't know if I'm gonna drive it until the wheels come off, but I'm gonna drive it until I'm financially free. And then if I want to go ahead and enjoy, for example, a nicer car, I can do that also and pay for it in cash. The problem is when people start to get to kind of like, hey, 
I'm never going to change it. Like, you know, at the end of the day, in life, you're supposed to enjoy your wealth. Only when your wealth is going to replenish all that money a lot faster than you're going to go ahead and spend it. Does that make sense? So if I'm making 100K passive income and I spend 50K, no big deal, right? But that's the entire point. So eventually, I do want to maybe buy a nicer car or buy that shirt I want to buy. But it comes when I'm actually ready, not when I want. But uh, it's again one of those things that we talk about focus. So for me, car is not a big deal. Car is something we just use to go from point A to point B. Point A to point B, but I need somebody that Ferrari. <laughs> I'm just kidding, obviously, okay? But yeah, yeah, just point A to point B. Clothes, things you wear over yourself, right? A house, just shelter. By the way, a house is cool, but the home is better, right? The home is like the people that are with you there, making sure they're happy. That I know I'm getting like a little fussy here, but that's the important stuff. So it was more about functionality and usage rather than... Wow, look at all those houses in that area. That's a lot of houses, wow. Uh, the Joneses effect that, you know, people are watching what cars we're driving. Yeah, keeping up with the Joneses is not a good idea. Same for example, hey, look at Marco over there. He has a BMW, so I want a BMW too. No, just don't worry about Joneses. Maybe um, Marco, I mean, maybe Marco has like a bad marriage, um, a bunch of debt. Maybe that's not what you want at all. So just ignore Marco over there. So, so the biggest challenge in being a millionaire, uh, I think is, is yourself. You are the biggest hurdle because the definition of normal in the U.S. is pretty bad. You know? <laughs> I like that quote. I like that quote. By the way, normal, I think it's something about average because the average person has a bunch of debt <laughs> can't take care of. Not funny. Cannot take care of, for example, of the emergency fund and all, and all that stuff. The answer is like the average is not good. You know, average is not good. You don't want to be average at all. You want to be better than average, okay? You know, we 70% of the people living paycheck to paycheck, and unfortunately that is normal. So as Dave Ramsey says, you know, you got to be comfortable being abnormal. So abnormal should be a good thing. I yeah. And when you're surrounded by normal people, sometimes you got to remove yourself from that field and just stop. You know, you, I, okay. I have friends. I give them advice. Some of them take them. Some of them don't. You got to understand. Again, we go back to the same thing. You can't change people. People change when they're ready. I had friends that years later, now they come back and say, Tommy, can you help me with this? I'm always open, but you got to protect your energy. I'm not about all the energy stuff and all that, like put some like smoke up on me. No, no, no. But it is important to protect the people around you, your circle, your energy. I think on those terms, you have to surround yourself with your like-minded people in my real act. Oh, she just said it. She just said it. I swear I did not watch like to this point of this video. She just said it. Awesome. Actual life, I'm surrounded by friends that are always complaining about being broke, but they live like millionaires. If you are part of that community, then find another alter- Oh, do you guys hear that? Did you guys hear that? I'm surrounded by friends that are always complaining about being broke, but they live like millionaires. I'm surrounded by a person that has a nice house, a nice car, nice clothes, nice everything, and they complain about not having enough money because that's basically your finance and a lifestyle you're not ready for. And it's so embarrassing to get rid of things that you cannot afford. For me, when I had a bunch of sneakers, it was so embarrassing coming to school without them anymore, right? Because now I don't have those things anymore. So now I'm kind of like, oh, look at Tommy. He lost everything. No, more like, hey, Tommy just sold things. Use that money to then go ahead and reinvest and make more money, okay? But it's tough, but you got to make the decision. And again, don't worry about them. Worry about you and what's going on in your household. Alternative community, even if it's online. Follow the Dave Ramsey show. Follow him on Instagram. Read his books. Follow the Tommy Bryson show. Follow him on Instagram. Follow him on the main channel. No, no, I'm, I'm, but you know, Dave Ramsey's cool, you know. Um, everything he says, is it perfect? The answer is no, obviously. The investment advice, is it perfect? The answer is no, obviously. You gotta listen to people, find ways to optimize it, find the good things about it, and just grow from there. That's that's usually what I do. Find your community, find your tribe. Just slow down a little bit. Uh, if we watch a movie, you know, we're about to spend a couple of hours on something, we evaluate that. Oh, is that a good movie? And if I, because I'm concerned that I might lose two hours. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's called optimizing your time, right? I used I, I was terrible with this, man. I, I used to spend hours every single day just watching trash. Like, things that I don't even remember. Like, hours, hours just watching. You got to take care of your time, respect your time. An hour that I spend, for example, doing something, that's an hour I can spend, for example, with my family and, like, doing something that I actually like. So, you got to be very selective with what you put your time into. We're about to spend decades of our lives 
on a journey, shouldn't we take a moment, you know, and think about what we're doing? I, I love I love his family, man. That's awesome, man. He has his wife, he has his kids, has his house, has his money. That's awesome. You, you can't you can't you can't say anything wrong with this story right here. People buy stuff just to get a kick out of it, and they're losing money. If you can get a kick out of saving money, isn't that a better kick? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is true. That is true. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with buying things, okay? Dave Ramsey has a bunch of cars, I think, and all that stuff, and a nice big house. Once you can afford it, if you can't afford it, go ahead and buy it. Enjoy your money. I remember I read The Rich Man in Babylon, and the whole idea was, hey, I like to find things in life, but I didn't buy them until I could go ahead and afford those things. You don't want to go broke, obviously, but you want to be able to also enjoy life. That's that's the whole point. Enjoying life, enjoying those experiences with your family. It's important. <laughs> I hope you caught that, people. Don't walk away from this. All right, that is it, guys. Okay, there we go with Chris Hogan again. By the way, Hogan, I wish you and your family all the blessings, and I and I and I hope you guys figure out everything that's going on, and I hope your relationship with Dave Ramsey is still intact in some way. Okay, now, guys, overall, what do I think about this video? I think it's awesome. You know, it's kind of like a saying. You know, like you don't have to look a certain way to be a millionaire or whatever. Building up to 1.4 million, I think they're in their 30s or 40s. That's amazing. Instead of, for example, saying, hey, I have to wait until I'm 65 years old to get there. No, just start investing, investing, investing right now and get to where you're going. Guys, any questions, comment down below, let me know. Any ideas for videos, comment down below, let me know. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. And as always, guys, make sure to go ahead and like this video. Also, subscribe, hit the bell to so get notified. And if you guys want to text me or call me one on one, join my Patreon, link down below, send me a DM on Instagram at Tommy Bryson. And if you want to watch another video, well, here's a video right here. I can my face right here. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. And as always,